speak. I did my presentation on Latino Americans and Hispanics. My name is Crystal Frank. I'm a junior. The history that has led um, the Americans to oppress against Latinos and Hispanics was in the 19th century during the uh, Mexican-American War. It showed that um, when the war was finished, it said that Latinos and Hispanics were all they were good for was cheap labor. Also, the gold rush also had heavily impacted the oppression of Hispanics because it made Americans feel that all they deserved was to do the low paying jobs since it was too dangerous to go out and mine in the gold fields and that it was too dangerous and too just not worth their time. Therefore, towards the end of the gold rush, Americans also felt that they um, were intimidated because the Hispanics took all their jobs because they didn't want to do them because they were too dangerous, so they started to lynch them. 41% of Americans think that Hispanics are custodians or lawn care workers, therefore that portrays the cheap labor and the um, forced low paying jobs. The media portrays them as gangbangers because they always you always see a typical gang member for Hispanics in the white t-shirts with the jackets up and the bandanas in their hair. They are portrayed as mostly villains with sombreros, dark skin, and their face usually typically covered up. Um, most people perceive Hispanics as welfare abusers because they don't see them anywhere in stores coming from a retail perspective. They don't everyone that sees link cards or snap cards coming through their line, they typically see them as Hispanic people. The existing prejudices and stereotypes are lack of education, all are poor, men are typically drug users and dealers, all from Mexico and are illegal. Americans judge that all Hispanics and Latino Americans are uneducated because they don't speak English. They are all poor because they are mostly seen with food stamps, link cards, or Section 8 housings. All men are drug dealers and drug users. This is portrayed in the media very heavily. In Cheech and Chong, they use um, two Hispanic gentlemen who um, are always getting high and smoking marijuana. They're all from Mexico. This is um, still huge in America today. They are not all from Mexico. They're from Cuba, Nicaragua, Puerto Rico, Spain, all over the country. They're not, they're different Hispanics, and they're all illegal. 21% of Americans feel that Hispanics are illegal and they come over from the Rio Grande in Texas. The prejudices and stereotypes that I had before taking class 300 was I thought they were all lawn care workers. I felt that all of them have lots of kids. Most of them use SNAP programs. I thought that they were all good cooks since they come from such a good food group of um, food, I guess. And they were all Mexican. I did not. I did not even think about calling a Cuban a Cuban or even a Puerto Rican. I participated in talking about how if you were outside mowing grass, I would say, oh, so are you of the Latino descent? I would say that they were all Mexican. I would never say Latino or Hispanic or Puerto Rican before I came to college. And every time I saw a huge car of people, I would always just assume they were all Mexican or Hispanic or any of that. The culture and the the effects of stereotyping is Nacho Libre is a movie with Jack Black, and he portrays this um, portrays the poverty level aspect of so, um, Hispanics because in the movie it shows at the beginning of a little Latino boy coming down the house, and it just shows that the Latino has his shirt um, ripped up, it's stained, it's gray. They have, um, and then Jack Black's character was getting ready to wrestle. Mm -hmm. Cheech and Chong, they. Um, demonstrate the aspect for um, the drug using and the drug dealing because in every thing associated with them is always them smoking marijuana, always looking up for the next time that they can get high. Family Guy has the man Consuela, just portrays the slow, um, low cheap labor, always putting down the women as housewives, housemaids, every chance that they have. My goals for to stop the oppression against Latinos and, and Hispanics are to educate myself on their culture. I would read House on Mango Street by um, Christmas to identify more with their culture and understand it better. I would educate myself on the welfare systems and who uses it. I would volunteer at a public aid office just to see who comes in and out of the facility and who needs the help to, um, with the public aid and the welfare. I would work with a Hispanic or Latino American 
to see what they do and how they feel when people assume that they are low ch and cheap laborers. I interviewed a 22 Hispanic male. I asked him where and when he was born. He was born in Chicago, Illinois on September 1st, 1992. I was not surprised because he takes a lot of pride in his city. I asked what kinds of things he spent, his family spent money on was his dad spent it on DVD, CDs, tools, whereas his mother spent it on the more um, matriarchal things like the food, the toys, the clothes, taking care of the family. I was actually really surprised since his family is so close-knit. I asked who was his best friend and are you still in touch with them? He responded, yes, he is still very close with them and they keep in touch every chance they can get. I was shocked because he doesn't keep close-knit relations with other people. What would you find surprising about you as a teen? He said he was a very angry teenager, and I wasn't surprised. The most memorable college moments he said that he had was signing his name to the paper for him to attend college and to play football. I was really excited and happy because he broke the cycle of his family. If you could do it again, would you take a different academic path, or are you satisfied with the route that you followed? He said, I would not change anything. I'm content with my choices, and I have no regrets. I was surprised because he's mentioned multiple times he's wanted to change his major. What is most important to his parents was for him to finish school, to beat that cycle. I was surprised. The three wishes that he would like were to be rich, immortal, and have more wishes. I was not shocked. His first job was a, college, or was a football play coach, and I was happy. His ideal job would be to grow marijuana. What is your goal if he was a parent? He has no kids now, but he said for my child to be better than I was in life, and I was surprised, and he said, what does the word family mean to you? He said, someone who always has your back no matter what the circumstance is. I was happy and shocked. His first love was Martha. He has, I asked him if he's broken any hearts, and he said he's broken one heart. And I asked what your definition of happiness was. He responded, I'm still in the pursuit of happiness, which was not surprised because he doesn't know what happiness is. And the last question I asked was what his greatest fear was and his greatest hope. His greatest fear is not to be able to support himself, and his greatest fear, or his greatest hope, was to be able to be himself.